Hey, what's up, YouTube? Joe again from Grind House Grotto. And today's Tuesday. I didn't go out and do any shopping, but kind of want to share with you all some of the stuff that I picked up this week. Um, picked up quite a few things. Just kicking back, drinking a cold beer, uh, watching Evil Dead 2. Got an incense burning. Just relaxing. But yeah, let's go ahead and dive right into some of the stuff I picked up. All right, so... Earlier this week, I went to the Goodwill, like I usually do. Found some pretty cool horror movies. Uh, one of my favorite action films. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into what I picked up. Alright, starting off with the VHS tape. What I'm watching right now, I picked up Evil Dead 2. at my local Goodwill. It's in pretty rough shape, but I mean, it is what it is. VHS tape, pretty cool. I was pretty excited to find that. Then I found Kickboxer. Now, I already own this one, but this is in far better condition than the one I own. So, I was really glad to find this one. The one I found was in really rough shape, so this one's actually really good. So, I'm always looking to upgrade my VHS tapes if I find better copies of them. Pretty cool stuff. <clears throat> now, I was really excited to find this. First Blood from uh, with Sylvester Stallone. Classic action movie. I love that cover art there. So awesome. It looks kind of like similar to a comic book. Pretty cool stuff here. Look at that photo of Stallone there. So, while I was at the Goodwill, I, I don't often pick up DVDs because I just prefer to get the films on Blu-ray, to be honest. I mean, I love collecting VHS tapes, but I never really got into DVDs. But, I, I mean, from time to time, I do find some DVDs that I want to get. Um, if they're, You know, they're only 50 cents, so I figure, what the hell. One of the films that I've been kind of wanting to see that I don't own right now, well, actually, I own now because I picked it up, but I didn't own previously, um, and that is The Zodiac. So I was really interested in seeing this film. I'm really interested in the true stories, the true crime stories, um, stories of serial killers and everything. And this one kind of um, made me curious to watch because it is based on a true story, the Zodiac Killer. And from my understanding, he's never been uh, he's never been caught. So I really wanted to see this. It's got an all star cast: it's got Mark Ruffalo, Jake Allen Hale, and Robert Downey Jr. I did watch this the other day, and I thought it was pretty good. It was kind of slow at times, but I mean, overall, I thought it was a really good film. So yeah, I'm pleased to add, to add this to my collection. And the next one that I found at my Goodwill is Cloverfield. Now, this one's actually sealed, which is pretty shocking. This has never been opened. So that was, <laughs> for 50 cents, I mean, you can't beat that. And I don't own this on Blu-ray, so I was pretty happy to pick this up. Uh, I saw this uh, shortly after it came out, uh, rented it from um, Redbox, and I thought it was a pretty good film. It's uh, kind of like a found footage film, but but I dig it. It's, it's all right. It's not a bad film. Figured I'd uh, give it another shot, and for 50 cents to have a sealed copy, you can't beat that. You can't pass it up. All right, so I ended up going to Walmart. Um, you know, last Tuesday to kind of shop around, see what they had. These last couple of months have been really horrible. There's been nothing good released. But I did find this one film, and I've kind of saw it for a while, and I've been passing on it. You know, it's a really cheesy film, but I'm just going to show, show you what it is. 12 Feet Deep. Now, you, you've all probably seen this. It's got Tobin Bell in it. He's literally only in it for about 10 minutes in the first part of the film. Um, so I thought, what the hell, this guy's Tobin Bell in it, I like him as an actor, I don't really know anything about these other actors, but I'm really into these, you know, cheesy, uh, lately they've been doing, like, a lot of, like, um, since, since The Shallows came out, they've been doing all these, you know, stuck in the water movies, or stuck with sharks, those are the type of themed movies we've been getting, so I figure this would be kind of worth a watch, I'm gonna tell you straight up, this movie is horrible, okay? There is no redeeming qualities with this movie. I tried to give it a chance, and it is just boring. It is literally these two girls stuck in a pool talking to each other the entire time. 
that's all you get is just the entire film of them underneath the cover of this pool. I don't even know how they could, what made them think this was a good movie. But yeah, it does come with two extra films. So it comes with The Longest Swim and Keepsake. Actually, The Longest Swim kind of looks like a pretty cool movie. I'm going to have to give it a shot. It's uh, this guy who's vacationing at a lakeside cabin, and um, he hears his childhood friend Ben, who's you know has diabetic, going through a diabetic seizure, and the only way he can get help for his friend is he has to swim across this lake. And so it's it's him traveling across this lake, and I, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'm going to give it a shot and see what it's, what it's about. I don't know too much about this other film, but yeah, I'll watch him. I mean. It wasn't that expensive. I think it was like nine bucks for these three films, but yeah, this one right here is just horrible. I don't recommend this or anybody. It's the most boring film I've ever seen in my life. All right. So I went to Best Buy and I went through their Blu-ray bins and I picked up some pretty good deals, movies that I don't own. I, I previously I might've owned them on DVD or VHS. So I figured I'd upgrade to Blu-ray. The Crow, classic movie. Really love this film. Really dark and gritty. Haven't seen it in a long time. So when I saw this in the Blu-ray band for six bucks, I was like, I gotta get it. Gotta add it to my collection. So I'm I'm really happy to have this. I'm pretty sure the uh, digital HD ultraviolet is expired, but yeah, I don't collect the HD um, ultraviolet codes. So I mean, if let's just take a, take a look and see if it's expired or not. Well, there it is if you all want it, because, yeah, it's actually expired in 2015. It might still work. If it is, you can go ahead and pause it and try to redeem it. Anytime I get these movies that have HD codes, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, post them on my video so people can redeem them, because I don't use them. Next up, a Michael Mann film, one of my favorites, Heat. Um, I own this on DVD, but I don't own it on Blu-ray, so I really wanted to upgrade um, yeah, awesome film. Love this film to death. I think Manhunter, out of the Michael Mann films, is my is my favorite out of the Michael Mann films. I do enjoy Heat a lot, but Manhunter definitely wins hands down as far as the Michael Mann films go. But I had to add this to my collection, and I think this one comes with a digital HD, so I'll let you all redeem that if you want. There it is. It's good until 2019, so go ahead and redeem it. Cool stuff here. All right, next up, a movie I've been really, really wanting to get. I've passed on it several times, but I couldn't do it any longer. American, American History X. This film is absolutely incredible, okay? Um, I know... Uh, Edward Norton was nominated for, I think, an Oscar for this film for uh, Best Actor, but I think somebody else won the won the award. I think he should have won an Oscar for this film. He did an incredible job, you know, playing two different roles in this movie. He played the, you know, uh, skinhead white supremacist in the first part of the film, and then we see a more refined, you know, uh, he comes back in the second half of the film, and he's he's learned that, you know, it's just a you know, the way of life that he was living is just, it's wrong. And it's just not, it's not what he thought it was. And he was living kind of a, kind of like living a lie. So he comes back to want to save his brother from, you know, falling down the foot, same footsteps that he, that he led. So incredible film all around. I mean, the entire, all the cast in this movie does an amazing job. Edward Furlong plays a pretty good job in this movie. I wouldn't say that, you know, it was a, it was an ex excellent, um, excellent role for Edward Furlong, but, Edward Norton really steals the show in this movie. I really did the hell out of this movie, and I definitely want to do a review of this film in the future. All right, next up. Sleepers. Now, I saw this movie a long time ago, and, I mean, I haven't. it hasn't really been on my list of movies that I've been wanting to get, but for six bucks, I hadn't seen it in a long time. It was a really good film back in the day when I seen it, so... I picked it up. It's got a really good cast. It's got Kevin Bacon, Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, Jason Patrick from The Lost Boys, Brad Pitt. And just a little short synopsis. It's about these uh, young kids, and they go to a 
um, school for troubles for trouble kids. It's kind of like a uh, kind of like a juvenile facility, I guess, for for trouble kids. And the prison guards are basically like um, doing really wrong things to them. I don't want to spoil the plot, but this is them kind of retelling the story of what happened to them in this uh, in this school for trouble kids. And it's a really powerful movie, just really suspenseful and just really messed up. So I highly recommend checking this film out if you haven't seen it before. All right, next up, another Brad Pitt film with Morgan Freeman, Seven. I love Seven, okay? I did a research paper when I was in college. I'm a criminal justice major. So one of the um, classes I took was um, crime and film. And without kind of going into depth what, what the class is about, I had to study films that related to the criminal justice system. So this is one film that I studied and wrote a report on it. And it's really cool film. And I don't know if you all realize this, but the entire film, it's raining. Except for the end part of the film where I'm not going to spoil the ending, but that is the only time the ending in this film. We all know how this film ends. That is the only time that it's not raining in this film. And there's a reason and you have to watch this film and figure it out for yourself. The reason why it's raining the entire film. And if you can figure it out, leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know why you think it's raining throughout the film. There it is. There's a two-man crew right there. I don't think it's one of Brad Pitt's best films. <clears throat> I really do uh, think it's more one of Morgan Freeman's better films. I really dig his character in this film. I think the their their chemistry that's there too. Uh, Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt is really good in this film. Really enjoy it. All right. So after I left Best Buy, I ended up going to Fye. Got a couple things that I've been really wanting to get. I found one thing that I've, I've never seen before. Maybe you've all have you've all seen it before, but this is the first time I've ever seen this. I'm, I believe it's a really obscure film, and that is Effects. Now, this is a kind of documentary slasher. Um, it's it's a documentary that makes you think it's a documentary, but it ends up becoming a slasher. And it's got you know all of George Romero's friends. It says up there. Um, a chilling combination of luxury and discomfort. And it's got all George Romero's, you know, people that have worked with him. Tom Savini from Dawn of the Dead. Joe Pilato from Day of the Dead. And John Harrison, Tales from the Dark Side of the Movie. I don't know if he's necessarily worked with George Romero, but... Yeah, these are pretty much the guys that have worked with George Romero in the past. Let me turn around and show you all. I love his synopsis on this. It says, Cobbled together with loose change by George Romero's friends. Effects is a mesmerizing do-it-yourself frightmare that no one talks about, but everyone should. A group of coked-up filmmakers, including Tom, Don of the Dead, Savini, Joe, Day of the Dead, Pilato, and John, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie Harrison, gather in Pittsburgh to make a slasher called Duped, the snuff movie. As filming begins and accidents happen, it's clear that something isn't right, and no one could be trusted. Landing somewhere between snuff and a student film by John Carpenter, Effects is a meta-enhanced takedown on the philosophy of horror that doubles as a sleazy and terrifying movie on its own. Really cool stuff here. Comes a new 4K scan from the only 35mm theatrical print, After Effects, documentary with commentary track, early short films, archival commentary track, leader notes by AGFA's Joseph Ziamba. So I haven't watched this yet. I'm really interested to watch it. It comes with a pretty cool booklet. And it's got some additional reverse art on here. Let me pop it out. I know I'm kind of going in depth with this, but I, I just, I've never seen this before. And I just really want to share you all with this awesome find that I found. So once I watch this, I'm going to do a review on it because this is pretty cool. I have never heard of this. I've never seen it in any of the social media sites that I follow on Facebook. I just never heard of it. So it's eluded me until this point. Um, that could be a good thing. That could be a bad thing. But I will let you all know what my thoughts are on this film once I do a uh, review of this. Pretty crazy stuff there. All right. Last but not least, I picked up uh, a movie that I've been really wanting to get. And uh, I've been holding off on it for a while. So I had to pull the trigger on it because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get it with the... Uh, Limited edition run of this, so I had to get it. Coughed up the coughed up the change to get it, and that was Bas 
basket case with the slip case. I, I have to admit, I mean, I like this film, but I wouldn't say it's it's a it's a, an awesome film. I actually enjoy the sequels to the original better than the first one. I think this movie is just really dated and just really cheesy. It's it's hard to defend this movie. Story wise, it's not a good film, but I do enjoy, um, you know, the gore effects in this movie. I do enjoy the cheesiness level of this, but it's not up there on my you know favorite films to watch. But it is it is a classic, and I and I had to get it. Um, it's it's one of those movies I don't reach for it a lot, but I do enjoy it from time to time. And this thing is loaded with special features. I'm not going to get into all of them. That'll be for another review. Let me go ahead and pop this open. Just let you guys uh, check out the uh, check out the um, case real quick. Basket case. That cover art is freaking awesome. The tenant in room seven is very small, very twisted, and very mad. Pretty cool stuff. It's got the original cover art there. But yeah, guys. This was my uh, last thing I picked up when I went to FYE. I was pretty happy to have it. Uh, I'm going to have to go out and pick up the Synapse Films um, sequels for part two and part three of this to add all three of them to my collection. But anyways, guys, those are my pickups from the last week. I don't really do the Tuesday finds. I know a lot of guys upload videos of you know them out hunting at Walmart, Target, you know Best Buy and all that. I'm sorry, but I'm not really into that thing. I mean, there, there's very few movies that come out that get released to these places that I want to buy. The movies that I like to watch are the ones that, you know, you have to order them online or order them from you know, the online re retailers. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this film. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment in the comment section. Do you know anything about this effects movie? Um, let me know what your thoughts are on the film. And until next time, guys, take it easy.